For the day you realize what you have, you'll recognize you've been busy working since day one of your conception. Ignorance is not a flaw, even though it's seen in character to be one. And you see that a character too convinced about his story is forgetting where it is. And so it cannot be a character properly. It will have characteristics that will stop it because it is not listening properly. <coughs> and when I say listening properly, usually what comes to the mind of man is an immediate sense of remembering their incapability, turning you know, or pointing to how they could have been able. Because we feel that if we are segmented and if there is a God beyond us, that we are not in correlation with it. We're not understanding it. It is outside of us. It knows us, but we don't know it. And so your mind begins to wonder. And it's good because in wonder you find things that in other states you can't. That means you begin receiving the quality of your experience with more of an unknown percentage. So what that means is if I know where I'm walking, my experience will be different than uh, where I don't know I'm walking. But it has nothing to do with the certainty and uncertainty of how I walk. That is relevant to me. You see, free will means, buddy, your responsibility in this life is most immediately your moment of conception and all that you're aware of. And to be aware of it, look at it clearly to see that it is not the illusion you thought it was. Because you need to have a simple opening to clarity. Many people make spirituality or understanding themselves the hardest thing to do. And so of course, when you think it's really hard to understand yourself, you're not gonna try as much. You need to see that your habits create your habitat. <laughs> and in a sense, come from your engagement with maintaining your external reality. What that means is that I gotta wake up tomorrow. I gotta, I gotta go, you know, go to the gym, take a shower. I gotta do all this stuff. And this is all external reality. And it's not that I just because I'm thinking of deep thoughts, I'm gonna forget about all this stuff. I'm continuing it and realizing that what many people believe to be the spiritual journey doesn't have to shake your physical, even though normally it does. <laughs> when I say it doesn't have to, that means you can be aware of more than where you think you are and where you think you're not. You can be aware beyond these modalities of thought. So what I saw as a human being, or as a being, let's say at first, perhaps, was that we have something called the past, which everyone's acknowledging. And what that means is when they think about where the information is coming to them, they feel it's from their past. They feel it's my past because they are observing change. But if you can hold the same memory you had when you were a child present now, how would you be there and here experientially at the same time. Because we recognize the nature of thought and we see that I remember picking up a rock when I was a kid and that feeling and reality is as real here where I can explain it in like say another lecture even. You know, so what I'm saying is that you have a awareness of your experience of certain moments of existence that are there regardless how you relate to them. Information doesn't go any, anywhere. It is actually kept there by its lack. So me and you asking the same questions has been keeping a certain 
amount of information and a certain answer constantly coming to man. It's like if there were eyes in the sky, they, they saw mankind and they, in a sense, <laughs> were like, what are these guys doing? I mean, they've, they're constantly getting the same answer to the same problem. Why, why aren't they getting it? And so you see that kid who, that perhaps kid who was a fool and doing the same repetitive action, after some time of constantly doing that repetitive action, had exceeded beyond the repetition of other, be of other people and so had reached new greater heights of pushing into the unknown ability of man. You tell yourself bad stories because you're not telling them your environment is. And so if you're not aware of what you're aware of, then all disappointments are coming from your lack of responsibility to wake yourself up by being up, by knowing that you are awake, knowing that every lecture that has given you something has reminded you of what you have. And in a sense, that havingness dissolves out of form into a formless presence and knowing. Let the lion roar. Because once you do, you can no longer be told that you're sheep. You can no longer feel incapable in a world that is every second pulling you to live. Creation keeps itself alive. And so the way you can maintain yourself is to recognize that there's no need to linger and be hindered by a sense of self that is not following with the existential change you're going through. What that means is become aware if some of your thoughts are being carried from your childhood senses of self and experiences. Because once you become aware of the shape of the problem, the answer can be received instantaneously. You can know the answer instantaneously. So at times when people ask me a question where you will think no man with a linear mind can answer, I don't think of it in the sense of um, as someone who's constantly trying to be rational. I don't try to be anything. I am. And so rationality and rational, rationality, if rationality is something you got to study for to get a sense of clarity, then you will see that what you have any moment, regardless of how sufficient it is, how, how complete or incomplete it is, is not enough. You feeling complete, or let's, let, let me begin this like this, guys. If me and you were taking a walk on a very giant eagle's wings, and so the eagle was very huge to the degree that we could not see its face even because it was so far but we are on the wings of this eagle walking and we feel the breeze we feel as if we're on a different world than in a sense we are when me and you are there I want you to see that when you're so high in the sky the earth becomes irrelevant to you because you're not seeing it as much and so Perhaps the people who are out of space can see that regardless of how much they remember home and they miss their home, they're in a new moment of exploration. They're in a new uh, conception of space and time every moment. And when you recognize this, you realize you are carrying the torch of your past. You need it to illuminate your present to a conscious mind. That's how we have self-awareness. However, you need to use that torch to light up the torches of everyone around you and everything. And in a sense, after lighting up everything, after being the kindest person, you see the nature of all existence can be nothing but kind. And similarly, you can take this into the other end of the spiral and see that if you are cruel, you are looking at a cruel world, so you will look at a cruel self. So the beginning thing that you need to do and many human beings need to do into becoming more compassionate and very self-aware is to slow down their acts and to become aware of their thoughts differently. What that means is when you're perhaps running you know, uh, at your fastest, become aware of the nature of how your thought moves. When you are 
sitting down in an empty room, look at the nature of your mind. Look at the nature of your thoughts. And also see that you need to put some intentions of mindfulness as if I am from now on ready to begin being more aware to things and to everything that's alive. By simply saying that, you see that, damn, I said it, <laughs> and I'm going to follow what I said. So a part of you is comfortable with creating that reality now. You see a lot of the things you, you are uncomfortable with are things you feel you hadn't planned and you were pushed into. But when you see that there's no such thing as a push and a pull, when you are the one walking, you know, you become the most immediate reality. And so that astronaut um, who saw space as a small dot began recognizing that that small dot had immense potential to see itself. So I want to, in a sense, tell you that similar to how mankind is an evolved species transcending its past ways of thought. We sent someone to the moon and that astronaut looked down and saw the earth as a dot. And we recognize that one species within one planet can individually go out into the emptiness of space, into the emptiness of mind, and perceive the earth in a greater view. So what we constantly see we are doing is we are seeing ourselves in greater views and following the wonder of the next great view. And what a great view means is like, it's not a view that you're thinking about similar to how you're, you feel you have thoughts right now. It's what is here right now. The way philosophy and science dance with one another is that they in a sense can't. They can't dance. Because you see, the direction that philosophy wants to go to is very different than the direct direction of science. Only because man has an ability to see difference. Much blessings and namaste. <sighs> to continue, there are times that life makes you feel as if you have not given your complete effort when you could have. When that moment appears, you will see that it's as if the holographic nature of this projected reality begins to shift in the darkness of your mind. And what that means when I say darkness, I'm not being metaphoric, literally in the pitch blackness of your mind. Before you have certainty whether you're imagine it, if, if it's your imagination or if it's something else, you will see that when you don't have trust in shape, you remain unshaped. When you have trust in shape, oh, you will be shaped. <laughs> The unknown inspires you because there are aspects of your greater self that are waiting to be remembered by you, to be revealed to you. What is revelation but the truth being actually seen? You can always raise yourself by simply thinking about beauty. And when you begin thinking about beauty, you access memories where your states of being were very peaceful and at ease. And so, after thinking about beauty, immediately bring yourself here right now and wonder why you can't see that kind of beauty right now. Why your attention is segmenting you and why you're not holistically aware. You are a moment of existence. What is your potential? 
And so some men are inspired to break themselves and to recreate themselves again. When confronting many ideas and perceiving as if many simultaneous realities are present, you will recognize that what is bothering you is not an idea but a feeling you have about an idea. Because the intensity of that idea has increased in a sense of realness. What a lot of people don't understand when they Google stuff, perhaps, when stuff they could get from experience, they see that there's a difference in reality. So you are not understanding how a lot of statements have come to pass. Because you are creating a comfortable enough image of what you don't know to, in a sense, feel as if you know something. What that means is that I may stand in front of a tree and I may look at the tree and be like, okay, that's a tree, I'm a human being. I know that that's a tree. The tree doesn't know it's me because it can't. So I am beyond this tree. Do you see how our thinking is? And it is not just, I say how our thinking, when I say our, people are like, our, what do you mean our? And I'm gonna say humanity's problems. It's our problem, okay? I thought it was first, the first thing you're, you, in a sense, you feel at least is you're responsible for self. But then you become responsible of those around you. And at first, it's your immediate family and friends. But after your family and friends, it becomes into perhaps more isolated forms of your sense of responsibility for things. But something you're forgetting about all those people who you are responsible for is that before they are your child, friend, brother, sister, parents. They are human beings. They are life. And so you wonder, have I been, have I been loving the same family? Or have my eyes delved so deep that existence is my family? I will take care of what I know innately must be taken care of. What that means is that once you are a self-aware be human being, self-aware person, and you're aware of life, you're aware of life as life. It's very simple. See life as life. That's it. You begin to see that you thinking that you're ignorant is still keeping you ignorant of the present moment. You thinking about worry or you being worried is actually that. You are just simply being someone worried. You have definitions of worry. You have definitions of a circumstance, condition, situation, which you don't feel you can get out of. You guys, you see, mental toughness has been really promoted in our reality, but you need to see that mental toughness needs to be done with awareness because you don't want to be that guy who's trying to push a building and feels he's failing, okay? <laughs> You don't want to waste your effort by simply not having taken the greater opportunity that was present and uh, in front of you. What that means is throughout your day, you're going to see that great ideas and great opportunities are never there to, to be your friend. Greatness means what you're comfortable with being thrown away and you running like a madman into the forest. And when I say madman, not one who is insane in regards to, you know, mental stability, but one who has seen life as life. One who recognizes that the intelligence of life moves beyond the abstraction of thought. And how can we see something that is beyond the abstraction of life? I have thought about this, guys, very well. And Mr. Within came and <laughs> put his formless hands on my shoulder. And what I mean by that is that I remembered myself. 
and I recognized you need to respect your moment as a clear being meaning that you are all that can be observed you are it you know it however now we find ourselves very beautifully and complexly looking at solid forms of reality we find our hands touching the branches of a tree we find our breathing and its delicacy But all those people who have picked thorns have recognized that there is, there is a gap, there is something missing when you get rid of the thorns of a rose. As if the rose is not complete once you cut off the thorns. Because you have touched something that was growing. And what that means is you see this natural sense of growth that you have for, let's say, you care for plants and nature and animals and human beings and all form, you know, life forms and your pets and whatnot, you know. You know that care that you have? You begin, in a sense, having that through a selfless awareness to your present, which is infinite in nature and what you call eternity, but it is not the word eternity. What you, what you call eternity, and it is from there <clears throat> that man finds himself on that floor where he has a certain range of staircases to go up. Begin being playful with your life and you will enjoy it because <laughs> you're not calling it your life. The way I enjoy my day and step out of many comfort zones or try to, in a sense, see something that wasn't there but was beautifully there also, that is a sight for sore eyes. I so sore, as they can see, that the path to see everything is to not see. And you may, you may think these paradoxical statements are meaningless, but that's good. Because it is up to you to put the meaning. It, is up, it was up to man to see what the hieroglyphics were said by looking at its history. We judge ourselves irrationally and wonder why rational solutions don't help us, you know. And when I say we judge ourselves irrationally, I mean we have two fixed views on how reality is. What that means is you got to think of all those people who are bringing new ideas even in science and where their inspiration is coming from. Scientists get their inspiration for everything that's against science, opposite of science. So do not think you are not being seen properly by yourself. Be comfortable being you regardless of any idea that comes to you. My understanding of ideas is that they never were mine. Everything I'm saying to you right now is never mine. But at the same time, it always is, you know. It's, <laughs> this episode is very... <laughs> very... Well... Presented, actually. Your separations and comparisons are immediately here to show you both things that you need to 
go for and also to let go. If you're someone who has a dream, who has a plan, and who wants to create something here that will echo beautifully for a while, you will see that you cannot risk not or you cannot risk losing sight of your goal let me say that and so your tendency is just you know pass you by and you expand and you are no longer alienated and you know the right words are found to explain uh, what you need to every time you explain something so Recognize that you just need to increase the intensity and sensitivity of how you're communicating with others and also with self. Do not be trapped by thinking that just because you don't know, you're going to perish. Because uh, trust me, you don't know if you're going to perish or not. You know, you don't know if you're going to fail or not. You don't know. How are, you, how are people so convinced that they're going to fail at things? They've never tried. When I come across something new, you... are not attempting it. I don't touch it. And so if there's a task, let's say I've, I, someone, a Native American shaman begins, you know, teaching me about herbs or something, you know, I don't know anything about that, let's say. So how I begin understanding that is by seeing, by looking clearly. So immediately silent your mind, you're not trying to learn, and also you're, try, you're not trying to not learn. You're simply present very clearly, and you're just hearing uh, everything that's present, similar to how you're hearing someone cough in the corner or you hear uh, water flowing around you. Regardless how you are acknowledging yourself is creating the entrance to how through all these changes there was something that didn't change. You will see many people who were inspired by life communicated their past and their future in a present that they could only see. And you in a sense see that I am never the same person you hear or you think you know. Nobody knows me because when we are human beings, the nature of the design of this plane of existence is that two bubbles of unknown always know each other when they pop. You will see that the same tree that I see is not the same tree that you see, but me and you can examine that tree to such a depth to come to an agreement to it. So we see immediately we have one aspect of ourselves which we can never share to others. It's that thing that we only see because we've only, we are all aware of our experiences in, in that order and in that manner as we are now. So you will see a part of you can never be known by others and a part of you can be and that is the part where you have free will. An aspect of ourselves cannot be communicated to others because there is no voice for it. You will see there are some things you wish your partner and your relationship could understand about you but they never could because they're not created externally at least in, in the same way 
as you are because you've gone through other experiences. You're a different design. And we will see that even though DNA does not answer some questions about who we are, it keeps a sense of us here, which we can gracefully walk in. When someone pours you hot tea, it's up to you to choose <laughs> if you want to instant, instantaneously drink it and get burnt or you want to just wait for it to get cool and then work. A lot of people who find themselves even failing is because they're not allowing themselves something before they go through it. So I don't have failure, but I have very playful and uh, <clears throat> foolish acts to observe about myself in doing something new. Because when you see that the value, what is fueling your life, what is really directing this body of yours and all these attention that you're focused in, I guess, all the attention that you're focused in, you, you see that the person who waited for the tea let himself comfortably access what he could see in the present moment and then naturally in an inspired state of being just thought about it in which the thoughts came. So guys, <clears throat> something I want to very strongly communicate is that if your creativity is based on others' judgments, you will forget yourself and your creativity and your inspiration will reduce as any artist. But as someone who is an artist, you need to first understand it. no one ever understands you. And at times you might feel even you don't understand you, but at the end of it, you always did understand you. And you see that that aspect of ourselves which we are keeping which we feel we're keeping secret, you know, does not need to be told anyone. We're not keeping secrets, we're just not talking about it. Am I keeping a secret if I'm not telling you a fact I don't know? Am I telling, you know, is, is it a secret if I'm, if I'm withholding? Your attitude is creating a reality. And your attitude is the intention that comes from how clearly you've looked at who you are and what your ideas are. It is up to you to update yourself. And when I say update yourself, that means stop working in modalities of thought that are limiting, it gets boring. I think I had no choice but to be joyful. <laughs> Humanity will realize that you have no choice but to be joyful. Because how long do you want to go through these patterns and same cycles, do you know? It's like, okay, if the kid fell like a couple times, that was fine. If the kid is still falling every day until it's 40, then it feels as if it's falling, that's terrible. And it's terrible because it's unnecessarily kept. It's as terrible as drinking that tea too quickly and burning your tongue and wondering why you can't say anything or you can't speak. What you need to do is <sighs> smile. <laughs> Breathe. And comfortably perceive. And this is a, my take on Thich Nhat Hanh's beautiful quote, smile, breathe, and go slowly.
don't ever fear anything because there is no reason that needs to be there for you to fear it. Recognize the beauty in your simplicity as it shows you simply the beauty in your complexity. Recognize that you feel you've been conditioned to access knowledge in a very limited way. To become a wise and intelligent being, you need to become aware of your state of being before your state of thought, before your state of sense of self. And you know how you dissolve your own opinion when you feel it's incomplete is by listening to others. And now I'm telling you, take that into a more and see that through a deeper gaze. And let your eyes show you who you are. There are many things, guys, in this talk I opened up. And in a sense, a lot of the times the reasons you see me jumping from topic to topic is because once I begin engaging the topic in the approach, in the, in the approach I have, it gives momentum. So what that means is that I, I, of, I often use the pilot analogy for myself, for my metaphor, for who Mr. Within is. If people ask me who is Mr. Within, I, one way of explaining that, even though there's infinite ways, <laughs> I, I say it's, see it as a pilot metaphor. So when I begin talking in these talks, you, you feel, okay, intensity increasing, okay, okay, he's seeing something, what is he seeing? You, you're, you're constantly listening to this, and even me, I'm trying to also see what I'm seeing. <laughs> And that is why it's constantly breaking. And so depth means non-linearly uh, breaking the linear through greater and deeper observance and allowance of self to be. Your vision is simply here because it's looking at here. Where you are is not here. Similar to how when I look at a mirror, I see myself there, but I'm not there. That is simply the nature of our reality. And guys, um, some teachers have the arrogance to not simplify the complexity that doesn't need to be there. So in all these talks, there are many details that one can go into, but that is not the reason for the talk. The talk has no reason. The talk has no planning beforehand other than the inspiration of the speaker. To let words flow. You are your greatest knowing, you are your greatest intelligence. Your intelligence is connected to everything, so don't think that you're being judged by others because your intelligence is observing you. In other words, you think you're being judged by others, but your vaster sense of existence is keeping you here. You will see that the sun is on some subtler internal level of self-discovery your greater eye, the pupil in, of your greater eye. And when I say greater eye, I literally mean an eye. I don't mean anything else, just, just an eye. <laughs> just sight, it's your greater sight. And externally, there's much for man to do. There's never a reason for you to slack off. If you're slacking off, it's because you are not looking at the world and you're not confronting some elements in your life which you need to. Always confront the biggest thing in your life immediately. Because if you don't, you eventually have to. <laughs> so what that is, is if you have something you haven't done, instantly act. Just act as if with the knowing you have. When you're hungry, open the fridge and eat. Trust me, you'll find, you'll discover more about the nature of food. <laughs> Man.
many people drive through their own positive goals as if they're driving through a Burger King. <laughs> uh, drive through or something, you know? And you will see the reason I'm saying is that a lot of people have great ambitions, have a great ability to envision things, but when the time comes to act, they see that they're going to think about the vision differently. <laughs> so, the iron will that has, men, has made many men on our planet great is one where they knew what they wanted because it didn't have shape, it had a feeling they knew they were going to be. When you act by seeing that your action will transform your being as any act is doing, you would want to transform in the greatest possible way because you want to bring efficiency for human technology. Man needs to get rid of his ridiculous thoughts by always being aware of thoughts that don't need to be ridiculous and are just pointing to greatness. How you will keep in how how you're inspired to act works in random ways. You let your phone fall under the bench in the park and instead of instantaneously grabbing it, just stop. When you begin seeing the truth of what you are inspiring and striving towards, what you are motivated to do, the truth of that, in essence, is the same truth that is within all things. When you become aware of this, you recognize of the ability you have to experience yourself in simultaneous realities of conception. And when I say conception, that means you're kept in the solid conception of physical body, physical reality, but you can go into a state of being in a meditative state or some state of awareness where internally you are having simultaneous experiences of different realities. And in a sense, this is not done by you, it is done by your trust in life and your simple ability to say, all right, I'm getting rid of my anxieties and their weight on my back. And I'm just gonna let life show me comfortably and I'm gonna enjoy the ride. And breathe, and before you enjoy the ride, it's not that you're gonna keep it in the unknown. I'm gonna say that if existence is listening to me peacefully, I'm going to communicate beautifully. I'm going to say, dear existence, I want to develop in this way to inspire and to help humanity in this way. Dear existence, I want to build myself in this way to suddenly understand that I could, I could change industries and cultures by my simple words that are always being said to my most compassionate self, which is all those around me. Because suffering is only present when it feels it's surrounded, when it's surrounded by shape and condition. The minute condition leaves, surround what is around you fades, your suffering could have never been even there. Once you see your formless ability to confront your moment of being in its most absolute being, you will never the, you, use the word truth because all words become truth. All words become true. All statements become true. All shapes become true. All images become true. All colors become present. All forms become present. All shapes internally become present. All shapes internally reflect external reality. All shapes after internally uh, uh, showing external reality dissolve. In that dissolution, there is a moment. And in that moment, there is a collision, and in that collision, it is your ap apocalypse of you shifting between different intelligences as you're navigating through an awareness that finds itself in a reality of freedom and an awareness that finds itself in a reality that is chained to the weight of its past. You do not want to be lost in a conception that is not able. 
your ability to conceive yourself is proper, you know yourself, you are a healthy and complete being. Regardless of how incomplete you feel your human aspect is, or not even your human aspect, the things you feel you don't have or not. Keep your inspiration around yourself. Your sense of inspiration, that state of being in which you're inspired, where you're creative, is your teacher. You are your next teacher in the sense that you will allow existence to show you your greatest expression in this form and in any way information comes to you. Be gentle and know that you have the wisdom of eons of existence present in your simple, your simplest body. For we want to create a humanity that has such an ability to confront life that if the eyes in the sky stepped down, we would look at them and we would say, why are you late? Why are you so late? <laughs> or we've already, or we will land on their state of being. Or we will hopefully one day elevate to a beautiful moment where we are no longer trapped but found in any space and time in the cosmos where we see that we find our ability as such creators in our life. We find that we are the omniscience of the creator. And so, how we work with extraterrestrials and the eyes of the sky is that we co-create on a holistic level a new individual awareness. So, just as how I'm, if I, if I want to take a you know, if I'm out with friends or if I'm, in, if I'm in an office and I'm that CEO who's communicating what needs to be communicated to his, to his fellow men, I would see that I as a human being find my greatest value when I co-create with other beings and I become that omniscient awareness of it, which, can, which is untouched. Once you get that form of knowing, you will see that the greatest lectures were heard by your ears. The greatest ideas and truths and everything that you see is kept to be seen. Your past is here to be seen and you know, a lot of people think forgetfulness is bad or it's, it's, it's the sign of an old being or no. Forgetfulness is a way where many beings in our planet, or on this planet, uh, reduce the sensitivity of the harshness of life. But in a sense, to become more present in their liquid bodies. So when you see someone go paralyzed, and this is my view of course guys, this is my experience of it. I mean not experience, I mean I haven't been paralyzed, but <laughs> only in, in certain ideas, but it becomes clear. You're never right or wrong, but it's still clear. And you will see that the lecture I'm giving you is never the same lecture that you hear. Because how I hear myself when I communicate things is very different than how the communication, much blessings and namaste.